Good evening. Today we'll be discussing about ganglion impair block. This is one of the very important interventional pain management procedure of benign as well as the malignant conditions where the patient feels pain around the anus, perianal area or the valval area. And uh, this procedure uh, gives a very good pain relief. It can be done with the local anesthetic and steroid injections. It can be done with the chemical neurolysis with alcohol or even we can do the radio frequency procedure, particularly the bipolar radio frequency procedure. So first I'll be talking about its indication, content indications, little bit of anatomy, and then I'll be showing one video about how to do the radio frequency procedures for the ganglion impa. So ganglion impa block, as I was telling, one of the very important procedure. And uh, most of the times this is done for the peri anal and the valvular area pain of benign or malignant condition. It's located, ganglion impair is located where? In front of the sacrococcygeal junction, that means coccyx one and sacral five in this area. And uh, as you know, that there is sympathetic chain on the either side of the spine and uh, these two sympathetic chain finally unite together and form the last sympathetic ganglion of our body. And that lies in front of the S5 and coccyx one junction. Indications are several indications. One of the very important and common indication is your coccygodynia, tailbone pain. That is a benign condition. Apart from that, the, any other rectal or the perianal pain. Chronic pelvic pain also it can be used. Valval pain. Uh, vaginismus, and rectal pain of the malignancy. This is also very important indications or sometimes pain after the surgery. Suppose there is some hemorrhoidectomy operations or some other uh, operations for the uh, anal fistula. So if there is a persistent pain after these operations, so ganglion impair can be a very important procedure to relieve this kind of pain. Contraindications are active infections or recently done the spinal anesthesia, cardiac issues, or if there is a uncontrolled diabetes, that is also a uh, contraindication. So the procedure is done under the CM guidance. Sometimes it is done by the ultrasound guidance, but if we are doing the neurolytic block, it is always preferable to do under the CM guidance and patient is taken in the prone positions. I'll be demonstrating it further when I'll be demonstrating with the a real video, real procedure video. So preparations, then the uh, sacrococcygeal junction identification is the most important part. As I was telling you that we are going from posteriorly and you have to reach anteriorly where the ganglion impair is situated. So most of the time, so you pierce the sacrococcygeal junctions and go anteriorly. If we are uh, doing the chemical neurolysis or local anesthetic steroid block, then one single little going anterior to the sacrococcygeal junction is enough. But if we are doing a bipolar radio frequency, then we need to put two needles. One at the S5 and coccyx 1 junction. And second needle might be either S4, S5 or coccyx 1, coccyx 2 junctions. So that the bipolar radio frequency can be done to create a larger size lesion. Uh, complications are rare, but still it can happen, particularly the local numbness, uh, local infections at the injection sites. So, uh, and these are not that serious. So it sometimes can happen that there is a hematoma injury of the rectum or the uh, local anesthetic reactions, allergic reactions. These are extremely rare, but still can happen. So advantages, it's very really minimally invasive, gives a long-term pain relief, particularly if you are doing a uh, neurologic block. And sometimes it is used for the diagnostic purpose also to understand exactly uh, how the pain is being mediated and whether the pain will be relieved with the long-term effect of the neurologic blocks. So first what you do, patient is in the prone positions after the sterile dripping and dressing. So what is important that the midline is identified by the AP view. And uh, we mark it there. And then we take the CRM in the lateral view. This is a lateral view. But before that, we have marked it with an artery forcep or any marker. And then we come to the lateral view. Because what happens, sometimes the skin crease may not correspond to the midline. That's why in the AP view, 
midline is first mark and then to the to the lateral view after we are coming to the lateral view then we try to identify the s5 and coccyx 1 jun junctions like here you can see this is the s5 coccyx 1 junction or uh, the c1 c2 junctions here or the s4 s5 junction and then we infiltrate the local anesthetic so this is your uh, s5 and the coccyx rock junction and uh, we are putting a marker there we are giving local anesthetic injections here and once we are giving the local anesthetic and then you start introduce the rf needle so one rf needle at this area between the s5 and s4 junction and another rf needle will be placed so this rf needle is advanced in the lateral view up to this taking care that we are not puncturing or perforating the rectum so another is through the s5 and coccyx one junction so once we are reaching there both the needle are there and then we inject some dye and dye should be spreading like that dye should not be coming anteriorly it should be hugging the anterior border of the s5 and the coccyx ones and go longitudinally up and down not homogeneous spread or not going anteriorly so once we are getting this view we will be also going into the ap view to see that we are exactly in the midline not the side of the midline so we are taking in the ap view and we are checking that the needles are there in the midline though we have marked the midline still it is wise to see it is in the midline so we are happy with the needle position and then you take again to the lateral view and then we start the listening normally listening is done at around 70 to 80 degrees centigrade from around the 90 seconds to 120 seconds so this is the radio frequency procedures done uh, bipolar radio frequency is done and uh, after one or two cycles then we complete the procedure give local bit a little bit of deposteroids like tamoxifen and take the needle out and that completes the procedure so ganglion impair is a uh, very uh, handy procedures minimally invasive procedures but can give long term pain relief in the patients particularly of the coccygodynia or cancer patients who presents with the pain in the perianal area or the vulvar area so thank you very much and thank you for watching this video